Palm Sunday. Yes. Amen. Normally we would have palms and yes. everything like that. That's traditionally. Yes. Okay, so you got your five fingers that represent a palm. Oh, Come somebody. Yeah. And you ought to be waving your hands yeah. and giving God the praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't need a palm to just yeah. lift that up the praise of God. That's traditionally. Yeah. But take your five fingers yeah. or your ten fingers and give God some praise. Yeah. Come on, lift your hands up. Yeah. Lift your hands up yeah. and give God some praise. Yeah. Okay, so I have time. I'm, I'm going to preach a little bit half of this message. And it's something that God has spoken my spirit. Yeah. And I want you all to get your Bibles. And while you're, you all getting your Bibles, we're going to pray. I'm, I'm telling you, I feel this thing in my soul, down in my belly. Amen. And I pray that you all would get something out of this message. Amen. And if I title this message... Today, I would say Ruah. And, uh, and I'm going to let y'all know what that means. Uh -huh. It's Ruah. They call it, they can say Ruah or Ruak. Okay, so I'm going to let y'all know what it is. I want your, your, your inquisitive minds that wants to know. Come on, somebody. <laughs> oh, God, I thank you, Holy Ghost. Father God, I thank you for all things in the name of Jesus, and I praise you for your goodness and your mercy and your everlasting power. I thank you for who you are. You are an amazing God. And Lord, I thank you for this message today that called Ruach. And God, I ask you in the name of Jesus, bless the ears of the recipients. Help them to understand what the Lord is speaking and saying to the church. Father God, I'd ask you to move by your spirit for those who, that the members that who are not here, that they wanted to come and God, something happened. But God, I ask you to move and, and let them know that they got to take it by force. Yeah. And God, I'd ask you in the name of Jesus, help the ears of your recipients this morning. Let them receive this word on good ground. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to take you to part of the scriptures that the Bible speaks about. Talk about Ruach, or you can say Ruach. And I want you to go to with me, and when I tell you what the scripture is, I mean, it's going to come to your remembrance, the chapter. Go with me to the book of Ezekiel. Hallelujah. The 37th, I want everybody to follow with me. And the word of God, because I want you to understand and to know what God is saying to, during this particular time, the people of Israel, and which we also got to take notice and say that, Lord, don't let me be dead. Don't let me be dried up. Don't let me not to forget. Don't let me to forget about you, Lord, and forget about your spirit. Amen. Y'all make sure y'all come back. I want y'all to hear this word. Mm -hmm. So if you have in the book of Ezekiel, go with me to the 37th chapter. And I want us to read together. Amen. Because I want you to get this in your spirit. I want you to understand why God did the way that he did. Go with me in the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter, and everybody got to say amen. amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. So let's read together. Let's read in concert. Read. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out into the spirit of the Lord. So let, 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 me, let, you, let me let you get this straight. Okay. Let me read a little bit more. Okay. Then I'm going to let y'all understand. Carry me out in the spirit of the Lord. Read on. 
and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of what? Bones. Bones. Read on. And carry me. And cause me. Thank you. And cause me to pass by them round and about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they was what? Very dry. Read on. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, God, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, what? Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now we're going to start back, amen, you may be seated, but I want you to understand, first of all, Ezekiel, and offer him to understand what the Lord was speaking unto him, and to reveal something unto him, he first would carry out in the spirit of the Lord. You cannot know the revelation of God. You cannot see the enlightenment of God except you get in the spirit. The word of God is spiritually inspired. Come on somebody. Amen. These are not natural words. These are not words that somebody just made up. These, all the scriptures were written by men who was inspired by God or inspired by the spirit of God. What? To write. Come on, somebody. They were inspired. They had inspiration that came from God. So I want you to understand. God first had to put Ezekiel in the spirit in order for Ezekiel to understand what God wanted to show him. He ran about, he saw when in the valley a dry bone. When you in the valley, now these bones were still down in the valley and they was dry. They was dry. They was not even alive. They were dry bones, dead. So he walked round about. So let me tell you something. Sometimes when people get in a valley experience and get down real low, that's where you lose your living. You lose your integrity. You lose the word of God. You lose your spirit. So you down in the valley. Don't have a motivation to do anything for God. Now listen, even though he was referring to the house of Israel, let us take notice that when we get down in the valley, that God got a living of the valley that he can raise us right back up. Somebody better say amen. Amen. Ezekiel was down in the valley looking at dry bones. God first asked him, hey, uh, Ezekiel, can these bones live again? Lord, you know, because Ezekiel wasn't sure. But he said unto the Lord, he said, he said, Lord, you know that these bones can live again. How many of you say so? Amen. It's because he said that to the Lord because God knows all things. He said, oh, Lord God, that knows. Again, he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto these bones, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Let me tell you, the word of the Lord is the only way that you can live. Amen. You've got to live according to the word of God. The word of God will bring forth life into your situation. Yeah. Come on somebody. Yeah. You may be down low. You may be feel like that you're the only one going through. But I guarantee you the word of the Lord that if you will hear the word of the Lord, of the Lord it'll make you begin to become active. So let's read on and see how that these bones begin to hear the word of the Lord when Ezekiel got ready to prophesy. Somebody better say amen. amen. So he began to say what? Thus saith the Lord. Read. Behold, I will call out the tender into you, and you shall live, and I will sing upon you and will bring come on bring a flesh upon you 
And I would what? Yeah. Uh-huh. And put the ground in you. And you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. And listen at that. See, the only way that you can live is by prophecy of the word of God. Secondly, by him speaking the word. Secondly, the only way you can live is by the breath. That coming into your body, which is the Hebrew word called ruah. That the ruah means breathe, breath, wind. Come on, somebody. So the only way, somebody gonna get this thing after a while. The only way that you're gonna be able to live and for changes to come in your life, number one, you got to hear the word of God, and number two, yeah. that breath. That comes in the midst of us. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Let me tell you the breath of God, Ruah, would mean that God will breathe on us through the Holy Ghost. Y'all yeah. got to understand that. Wind represents breath. Wind represents. When the Bible said that when they were sitting, uh huh, in, 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 in Jerusalem, tearing, the Holy Ghost came like a what? Russian mighty. The only way that you can live today, you got to hear God's word. You got to apply the spirit of God down in the midst of us in order for us to live. It takes the word and the spirit. The word and breath when Jesus came up out of the grave and he saw his disciples. The Bible said, he said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. He them and said receive you the Holy Ghost that's breath that's breath the only way you can live that's breath and that's revival y'all revival means resuscitation somebody gonna say amen the only way that these bones was gonna be able to live first of all is by the word of God second of all is by ruah that breath got to breathe on them
Uh huh, I'm just sitting there. And then the flesh began to come upon them. Come up. They were all standing up like zombies. Oh, Jesus, Holy Ghost, y'all help me. All standing up like zombies. All standing up. No spirit. No breath was in them. No movement. We got dry bones in the churches today. When the word of God is being preached, you can't move. You can't say nothing. You can't wave your hand. Glory to God. I want to let you know the only way when it is all of these bones because the word of the Lord. You can best believe that the ankle bone got ready to be connected to the leg bone. The leg bone got ready to be connected to the E bone, the thigh bone, the hip bone. Come on somebody. Glory to God. Only he that do the 
It's also need to renew in the mind to recall. Come on, somebody. Take us, under uh, 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 Cross said, take us back to the place where I used to be. Come on, somebody. But I'm asking God, move us forward into the, uh, that, that arena that you want us to get to. That we can let God have his way. We can glorify God. Come on, somebody. People, that's the reason why David allowed instruments, made instruments, to come into the kingdom of God. Amen. Into his kingdom because they worship and praise the kingdom of God. Somebody better say amen. amen. They gave God all the glory and honor and the praise. But David was a man after God's oh, own God. heart. Why? Because David praised God. David praised God when he was a little shepherd boy. He praised the Lord. He saw how God moved. David said one time a lion came and wanted to kill one of his sheep. What happened? The Spirit of God came upon me and I destroyed him. The bear came to take one of my sheep. He said, well, the Spirit of God came upon me. Church, we need the Spirit of God to come back into the house of God like never before. We need the wind, come on somebody, to come into the midst of us. Glory to God. Let's read on, let's read on. Uh-huh. Listen, prophesy Ezekiel unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, what? That said the Lord, come from the four winds, O breath. Come from the north, O breath. Come from the south, O breath. Come from the east and the west. Come. And that wind got stirred up. Somebody better say amen. It was stirred up. It was created. And it came as Ezekiel said. Read on. Yes. Oh breath. Breathe upon what? These. Come on. Lord my God. Y'all y'all see what I'm talking about? The word. And the wind, the ruah, the breath, that spirit of the Lord, that's what it is. And they came and he prophesied and said to the wind. What did he say? Come on, y'all, read. So I prophesied and he commanded me. Uh-huh. The breath came into them, and the wind and the and stood upon their feet. And it seated great on. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. In order for us to be more powerful in God, we need the word of God in our lives. We need to hear God's word. In order for us to stand up and fight and do the things that God wants us to do, it's going to take the spirit of God in our lives. It's going to take us to be revived. It's going to take us to bring back life into us that we have consciousness that God is our Father and who He is. We serve and we honor Him in the spirit of truth. Amen. In the spirit of His word. People, listen to me what I am telling you. The only way that you can live the only way a church can be revived is by the word of God and by the spirit of the breath, by the spirit of the Lord. It's a baruch, which means breathe on us. Hallelujah! Bring restoration back into the church because the church has lost a lot. It's not even a power of God in the church. What makes up the church today is money money. If you give a large sum of money in these churches, they acknowledge you. They acknowledge you as somebody being in the church. When the money came power over God. Come on somebody. That's where the word, that's the reason our churches are so dead. The churches. Why do you think that the devil is taking over our community?
community. The devil is killing our children. Drug is on the rampage. Prostitution on the rampage. Our kids are losing their life because the churches don't have the power of God like they used to have. Yes. They don't. Yes. And we wonder why our children are the way that they are. Yeah. I was talking to a, a counselor the other day and I was just telling them that how people are going through so much and I said people are losing it so I said my heart goes out into the community. I told her I, I told the counselor I said we got to do something to save our children. Yes. And she said you are so right. I don't know what we can do. I said I do. The children got to have a spiritual balance yes. in their life. Let me yes. tell y'all, y'all think y'all could go out here and do whatever you want to do and forget about God? That's what a lot of people have done. But one day the Bible says this, remember now, thou creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not. Yes. Evil days are coming. And I'm approaching. That's why we, as this few little church that we are, get ready to take this thing to the street. Don't you know that's going to be a testimony against those? Because we're telling them that Jesus is coming back. We're telling them that Jesus is soon to come. That's what it's all about to me. It's not about how much money churches you got in the bank. It's not about that all you own, even an airplane. You got that, but you got poor people are dying in the street. The drug addicts are, are reaching out. They don't know how to reach out and say, Lord, help me. But you as a church believer need to take yourself to the streets. Amen. Amen. They don't want the people in the streets. They want the people that are doctors, professional, business people. Do you think churches Members, pastors, whoever you may be, do you think when you stand for before the God, I had about 15, 20 doctors over here. Who did you heal? Lord, I had about 20 lawyers that was under me. Okay, what did they do for the poor people? Amen. That's what the poor, Jesus loved the poor. He said that the poor heard the gospel gladly. Where is the church? The church is moving to the area of one of the lands to see a church in the book of Revelation. The church of Philadelphia. He said, listen, y'all got all the riches? Show it up, oh, oh, sire. You got all Uh, a property rental 
and a home. The property renter pays the mortgage on her home. The city wouldn't help them to do anything than help this lady. All of the money that the city has, and I know I'm not blaming the city, they don't have the vision except for a few. And I work with those few, some of the few members of city council. She lost her home. They took it because she owed taxes on that house. Mm. That was the uh, help her to uh, survive and pay the mortgage on this house. She lost that house. And now she in the process of losing her home. And I was talking to one of the, the men that worked with me. We have helped the homes that we got about $4.2 million. And I said, so what are you gonna do for this lady? Yeah. Does she need to come up the code? Cause she don't have enough money to fix her house. Yeah. He said, yeah. she's the first one who we gonna help. I said, you do that? Uh -huh. I'll process that transaction just like that. Amen. That's what we supposed to be in here for, yeah. is to help these people that need help. They don't have the money to fix up their home, to fix up their building, to fix up this and that. Those that who lives in the city, people, that's a way out. Yeah. And I know I'm seeing the money every day. $4.2 million in this particular program. $5.5 million in that program. $78 million that the federal government gave us to help the homeless. And who is telling this stuff to the people? Nobody. Why they can't see it? We put out a NOFA. Uh -huh. We put out the, the a notification that these funds are available. Guess what? They can all can read. That's right. That's right. So I want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to be bringing them homeless and community people together and try to let them know, look, y'all better get start reading this newspaper and know what's coming and what's not. And then some of the churches needs to tell their people yes. about it, but they don't. Because it's all about their greed and what uh -huh, they can get. Uh -huh. That's what it's all about. It's about helping the people to me. Yeah. I'm going to stop right there today. And I'm going to say, we need to cry out to God Amen. for these churches. Let them know that they got to go back to doing what God called you. God didn't call you to be a rich person. Amen. Even though we can be rich, but that's not the final say-so. Somebody better say amen. amen. Help the poor people to get where they need to go. Y'all doing all of these different things, my God. And I'm going to be talking more about that about those seven churches in the Bible that Jesus said. He told them, John, write this down. Tell these churches in Asia.